on the day that Carter left office and Reagan came in. Unbelievably, this same network would even be linked to the BCCI banking scandal by journalist Danny Casolaro. Casolaro was probing a conspiracy he called the octopus, which involved the Iranian hostage crisis, the Iran-Contra affair, with, believe it or not, all funds channeled through BCCI, the international bank charged with everything from money laundering to fraud. BCCI, it's a shadowy international bank linked to terrorists, drug runners, and dictators. Little was known about BCCI until six of its top officers were arrested in Tampa in October of 1988 on charges of laundering drug money for Colombian cocaine bosses. The BCCI men were convicted, and the bank itself pleaded guilty. But for some reason, the bank was allowed to continue to operate all over the world. There are indications that some of the reluctance to prosecute this bank stem for the fa from the favors it did for the favors it did for intelligence services everywhere. Too many secrets of too many countries, too many prominent people, too many hands-on, and that makes it desirable that this entire affair be forgotten. It began to become clear that the global traffic of drugs were funding violent dictators, rigging elections, supporting the arms trade, and enforcing the assassination of anyone who got in the way. Casalero was found dead for his efforts in exposing this network. His death, of course, ruled a suicide. He was meeting a source in West Virginia. He was about to discover all. Instead, his body was discovered in a hotel room with 12 slashes in his wrist. But when the local authorities ruled it suicide, the family said, no way. The housekeeper had taken calls threatening his life. And I pick it up telephone. I say, hello. And he said to me, you son of a bitch, you's dead. Casalero would not be the only person involved in the scandal to wind up in a casket. Meet Barry Seal. At first, the media portrayed Seal as a drug dealer gone good, who was assassinated by the Colombian Mafia. Authorities believe last night's machine gun killing of top drug informant Barry Seal was ordered by drug bosses in Medellin, Colombia, who sent five men to Baton Rouge to kill Seal. Sam Dalton was the lawyer that represented the Colombian hitman convicted of his assassination. We were trying to subpoena the CIA because we felt like they had documents, exhibits, and evidence that would indicate complicity in Seal's assassination. When they were able to gain access of Barry Seal's trunk the night of the murder, the personal phone number of none other than George H.W. Bush was present. Louis Unglesby, the former attorney for Mr. Seal, also confirms that he once called the office of the vice president after Seal had given him the number. You see, the black ops drug smuggling operation had not yet been exposed, and intelligence couldn't take any chances. It was later revealed that Seal was involved in smuggling cocaine into Mena, Arkansas, while Bill Clinton sat as governor. 1983, Ronald Reagan was president, Bill Clinton was governor and little Mena, Arkansas, changed from a quiet town to a center for drug smuggling and reported Contra support activity. In the middle of it all, this man, admitted dope smuggler Barry Seal. Arkansas State Trooper Russell Welch investigated Seal's organization. Each trip would have uh, 250 to 350 pounds of cocaine. According to the London Telegraph, Arkansas State Trooper Larry Patterson testified under oath that he and his officers discussed repeatedly in Clinton's presence. The large quantities of drugs being flown into Mena Airport, large quantities of money, large quantities of guns. Hot Springs police officers would also record Roger Clinton, Bill's brother, during a cocaine transaction stating, gotta get some for my brother. He's got a nose like a vacuum cleaner. There was also a large amount of money laundering going on in Mena. Former IRS agent William Duncan traced some of Seal's drug profits laundered through MENA banks. We had direct testimony from people who were involved in the money laundering operation. We had testimony from people at banks who observed the transactions. What happened when you tried to make this case before a grand jury? I was never asked to present the evidence to a grand jury, ever. This very same network used BCCI to fund the Afghani rebels. The deputy director of the CIA, Richard Kerr, said late today that the CIA did use the Bank of Credit and Commerce International, BCCI, to support CIA activities overseas. 
most people still believe that the Soviets had maliciously invaded Afghanistan in order to spread their communist agenda. The Al-Qaeda was essentially a kind of in, a byproduct of Brzezinski's campaign to embarrass the Soviet Union in Afghanistan. They, they weren't in Afghanistan at that time. Brzezinski boasted later that he was uh, responsible for drawing them into Afghanistan. And he did this extraordinary interview with uh, Le Nouvel Observateur in France, and they said, but aren't you worried that you've uh, created this whole new force of uh, Al-Qaeda? And he said, oh, what's more important, a few crazed Islamists or the fall of the Berlin Wall? And uh, they said, but you know, is there no danger? Isn't, aren't they dangerous? And he said, nonsense. He said all this in 1998. Uh, <laughs> So uh, I consider, I knew Brzezinski in, at, at McGill University. We were students together and took very small classes together. And in some ways he's bright and in some ways he's kind of nuts. And um, he's, he had the kind of nuttiness that uh, made him attractive to the Rockefellers. Bin Laden and his network were actually funded by BCCI through U.S. covert operations. Well, the reason I bring it up, if you've ever heard any of our call-in shows, you know that we have people that uh, think about the conspiracy theories mm -hmm. of people like you. Uh, you would be a poster child for these people because you have served on the board of the Council on Foreign Relations. You started, helped start the Trilateral Commission, and you've been to the Bilderberger Group. Too, are people too close in this world, uh, people in business, too close to the, the governments? Well... You know, there is such a thing as insidious influence. And the question is, how does it operate? Does it involve bribery? And does it involve some sort of psychological domination of individuals? I don't believe in this notion of some sort of secret societies controlling people. But, of course, in any political system, there are sort of over-the-table and under-the-table arrangements. Arrangements that involved ruthless, illegal, and immoral activities in order to dominate humanity. Despite all of the evidence that has just been presented, this network would fall down the memory hole, even though 14 convictions were made in the Iran-Contra scandal. The continued cover-up would be made possible by George H.W. Bush. Uh, these documents that came forward in the North trial uh, clearly reveal the involvement of the vice president to a greater degree, I think, than he has acknowledged heretofore. This, of course, did not stop him from pardoning those involved during the twilight of his presidency. Some new reverberations today to President Bush's Christmas Eve surprise, the pardoning of former Defense Secretary Caspar Weinberger and several others in connection with the Iran-Contra allegations. Well, now the special prosecutor says it's the president who needs to explain some things. The real issue is why the notes weren't produced five years ago when the congressional investigation and the independent counsel's investigation had requested them. Because high-level political officials scrambled to limit the investigation and establish plausible deniability for the upper echelons of the network, including Bush himself. So who is this guy? And how did he come to power? To understand that, we must first take a look at his father, Prescott. Prescott was born into privilege and became extremely influential in business intelligence, and politics. He helped establish the CIA out of the Army's Office of Strategic Services with the Dulles Brothers and served as a senator in the state of Connecticut. However, during his time serving as one of the directors of Union Banking Corporation, he was doing business with Nazis. The Bushes have been sort of at the heart of the military-industrial complex since its very beginning and that Prescott was involved in a firm that uh, actually fronted for Nazi firms uh, in America. In fact, Union Banking and its subsidiaries were seized by the United States government in October of 1942 under the Trading with the Enemy Act. After the war, the assets were returned, a few fines were paid, and it was swept under the rug of forgotten history. These Nazi ties should not be all that shocking, seeing as it has been declassified that the Office of Strategic Services recruited Nazis into its ranks through Project Paperclip in August of 1945. George Bush seemed to follow in his father's footsteps, using Prescott's business connections to move to Texas, 
and get into the oil.